Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with my monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month I've got the DVR interface up here again because they've added a new feature within the commercial skip feature that's been in here for a while that I thought a lot of you would find of interest. We're gonna check that out and also look into the intro skipping feature that's very similar to what I'm about to show you in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it gets uploaded and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get to it now and see what's new with this commercial skip feature. Now, just a reminder, the DVR feature in Plex is a Plex Pass feature. So you do need to be a subscriber of Plex Pass to get access to this. Uh, you're also going to need a digital tuner attached up to your Plex server in some way. Now, in my home, we have an HD Home Run Prime, uh, which actually interfaces with my cable system with a cable card, and I'm able to bring in a bunch of channels from my cable subscription into Plex. And the company that makes this product, Silicon Dust, is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. They're not sponsoring this video, but I've been using one of these HD Home Runs now for probably seven or eight years, and it's been great here because it not only works with Plex, but a lot of other stuff as well. They make tuners that also pull in over the air content. And again, it works very much the same way. Get it on your network, attach an antenna, and then whatever it picks up is accessible to compatible services and devices like Plex. There are other tuners that are compatible with Plex as well. And I did a whole video on setting up the DVR and we go into a lot more detail about it. Here we're going to focus primarily on this new commercial skip feature. So I'm gonna go into my DVR settings and scroll down to the bottom here. Now, commercial detection has been around for a while in Plex, but it was a destructive process in that it would detect and delete commercials whenever it found them. And what it would do is present you with a new file, essentially, that had all of the commercials stripped out. And if everything worked great, no problem. You had a nice file that was condensed without any commercials, but if there was an issue, you couldn't revert back to that uh, file before it was worked on. It was a very destructive process. Uh, with a new feature they've added recently, you can now detect commercials and just mark them for skip. And if you have a compatible Plex client, you'll be able to just skip through those commercials without impacting the actual file itself. And this might be preferable, especially if a show doesn't quite line up with the commercial detection. Uh, you can just manually skip through, but if everything is working properly, you can just hit a button every time the commercials come up and skip through them. And I think if you are looking for commercial skipping, this is probably what I would choose just because it's the safest, especially if you're building an archive. In the past, if you had it in that destructive setting, if something got messed up, you'd have to wait for the show to re-air before you could get uh, that show back into your library. So this is going to be a lot safer. Now, in order for this to work, you will need a Plex server that supports hardware transcoding. I've done a lot of videos on that topic, which you can find down below in the video description. The good thing is, as time rolls on, it gets less and less expensive to get a Plex server with hardware transcoding capacity. Now, I'm running mine on a WD MyCloud PR2100 network attached storage device. I've been doing a lot of test recordings just to see what kind of impact there is, and it really hasn't made any real dent in performance for me, but I don't have that many people connecting to my Plex server either. So you'll probably want to be a little cautious with this if you do have a heavily trafficked Plex server, but I think for most folks, it should be pretty low key. Now, this feature is not retroactive, so it's not gonna go back through all of your old recordings and analyze them, at least at the time I'm recording this video. It would be great for them to add that feature because I think that could add a lot of value to the mix here, uh, but right now it only works with things that it records after you turn it on, and that's it. But as you'll see in a few minutes, the intro skipping feature that we're gonna talk about does allow you to do that retroactive scanning. And I have a feeling that at some point we might see them do the same with commercial skip. But right now it is only going to be active on the things it records after you turn it on. So let's take a look and see how this operates in practice. I've got some stuff that I recorded a little bit earlier that's probably safe from copyright issues here. And as you'll see here, as the newscast enters into its commercial break, We'll get a prompt here at the bottom of the screen that I can use to skip ads. And when I do that, it will bring me right to where the ad 
uh, ends and the newscast picks up again, as you can see. So it works pretty good when it properly detects the commercials that it's looking for. And I found that it's doing a pretty good job finding those commercials. So here I've got a recording of South Park that started with commercials. And as you can see here, it already has the skip ads thing popping up at the bottom of the page. And if I go and skip the ads here, it will go right to the beginning of the show and kick things off. I'll have a copyright problem with that one, which is why I'm not showing you more than that. There are some ways to fine tune this feature. Let's have a look at that. So let's say I wanted to go and record the people's court. I can click on the record button here to pull up the recording options. This interface will be similar if you are adjusting an existing recording as well. If I go over here to show advanced and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see that we can set commercial detection settings for each individual show. By default, it will come up with whatever you've set the DVR to, but I could very easily just say, you know what, for the people's court, I just want to delete those commercials, even if there's a risk of a broken file. So you can do it that way. Uh, you could disable the commercial skip feature for the people's court, and you can also have it tie its settings to the DVR setting all the time. So for example, if I set this to uh, mark for skip, and then later decide to have the DVR do deletion of commercials, this setting will still stay in place for the people's court. So if I switch this to DVR setting, it will synchronize the commercial detection settings for this show with the DVR settings, but only if this is selected. Otherwise, a change to the DVR settings won't have any impact on the show individually. You might have to go through these settings after you turn this feature on, especially if you were using the other one. So I would suggest you go through some of your recordings and see what those settings look like and get them to where you want them to be. Now at the outset, I mentioned another feature called Intro Skip, which is very similar to this. Uh, so for example, I've got some old show here that I had on my uh, system. And what will happen here after it gets to the uh, point where it detected the intro, I'll have that Skip Intro button show up there and it will take me right to the beginning of the show so I don't have to watch the intro every time. This will work very similar to what you might experience with Netflix, except it's doing its own detection of those intros for the shows that are currently on your Plex server. So even things that were not recorded off the air, it will do this analysis for. If you find that it's not detecting those intros, you can force it to do an analysis. Let me show you how to do that. Now, like the other feature, this is a PlexPass feature, and it has to be enabled on a server-by-server -server basis. So right now, we're on my MyCloud server here in its settings. I've gone over to Library, and what you want to look for here is the option to generate intro video markers. And you can see right now, it is set on mine as a scheduled task and when media is added. So every so often, my system will go through and do an analysis of the library to make sure it didn't miss anything. Or if I add new media, it will do that analysis to the files that are added. You can also force it to run on a show season by season, and it uses audio to make the determination as to where the intro begins. So if you're not seeing those skip markers showing up, let me show you how to go through that analysis on a show-by-show -show basis. So here we are in Earth Final Conflict Season 4, and if for some reason you're not seeing the skip intro button show up on the episodes you're watching, you can click the More icon here and go to Analyze after you've turned the feature on on the settings page that we just looked at. Now mine's going to go super quick right now because it's already detected those uh, intro markers, but it will take longer if it hasn't yet gone through a collection of media that you're asking it to look at. So just be ready for that. Now you can also decide not to have it look for intros in specific libraries. So for example, if I'm noticing that I'm just seeing too much server usage and CPU usage on this detection process, I could say, you know what, I don't think the kids shows need to have those intros detected. You can go in and edit the library, go over to Advanced, and then at the uh, lower section of the screen here, you can disable intro detection. And that's a good way to go on a library-by-library -library basis to free up some CPU resources for libraries that you don't need to have this do that detection on. What's interesting is that there's also an option here to enable ad detection. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a feature, but I think the fact that there is an option for it 
uh, it probably suggests that we'll see something happen in an upcoming release of the Plex server. So stay tuned and I'll certainly do an update if that happens. Now what I would suggest you do is upgrade your Plex server to the latest version. The way you can tell if you're on the latest version is to log into your Plex server on the web interface. It'll prompt you if there is an update available. And then as for clients, it looks like it supports most of the Plex clients that are out there these days, including the Fire TV, Android TV, iOS and Android Mobile, uh, Mac OS desktop, Windows desktop, the web interface which we were just using, and Roku. So it looks as though it's pretty widespread here as far as that skip feature is concerned. And we'll have to keep an eye on things to see uh, what Plex has coming up for us next. I want to thank Plex for their longstanding support here of the channel. It's a big help. And I know a lot of you find these videos interesting as well. So it's a win-win for all of us. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.